The Build Show today, we're talking geothermal heating and cooling. I'm in beautiful and windy Rhode Island right now, visiting my friend Wade Paquin at WKP Construction. And look at this gorgeous house behind me. Now, Wade's done several geothermal systems before, including the one on this project that, believe it or not, has four geothermal wells right over here under the ground. We're going to be meeting with Wade and his contractor to talk through three common myths, I think, that are out there about geothermal systems. Today's build show with WKP Construction. Let's get going. All right, guys, if you don't know him, Wade Paquin, WKP Construction. He's also shooting videos for us at buildshownetwork.com. And Lou, he's a mechanical contractor, a &L Mechanical, right, Lou? Yes, thanks, Matt. All right, so we're going to get into three myths, but before we do that, let's explain where we are. Lou, what are these pipes that we're seeing in front of us here at this house? So, Matt, these are four, these are our four return legs going to our four geothermal wells. Um, these are all inch and a quarter lines going down underground and out to our four wells. We came up, put in some manifold stations, isolation valves, drawer offs. This way we can maintenance and service each well independently. Gotcha. So these are the four loops that are going to then go upstairs to your geothermal systems in this house, right? Essentially. What we're going to do with these four loops is we're going to manifold these together ah. into a two-inch main. We're then going to take that two-inch main, bring it up to our mechanical space, and put in our pressure-controlled variable speed pump. Love it. Now in the future, these guys are going to be shooting a couple of other videos about geothermal and about the mechanicals of this house that Lou's putting in. So make sure you go over to buildshownetwork.com, sign up for our newsletter there so you can see those future videos. But Wade, let's kick off the three myths. In your experience, what's the number one myth uh, on geothermal or the number one thing you hear from clients about it? Every time cost <laughs> and price. every time it's price and uh so let's talk about that what is that price is it double or triple to go to geothermal compared to conventional equipment it's not double uh my experience before lou with some other systems seven years ago was maybe uh close to 50 percent okay now now i think we're seeing it's more like about 35 the the real big difference in cost is the additional of the drilling of the wells. Right, right that's right. an expensive component. The equipment the in the house, the duct work, all that's pretty much the same, whether you're putting a traditional three ton compressor outside or not, it's these wells and these loops, right? Right, you're still, you still have a heat pump if you're going, you know, geothermal is heat pumps. So you'd still have an exterior condensing unit with a heat pump and an interior unit. All the duct work, all the infrastructure, the, the big difference is we don't have interconnecting refrigeration piping, we're carrying uh, glycol mixture geothermal pipes. Got it. I think it, too also that if we looked at pricing this a uh, traditional system with higher end equipment, high, with higher efficiency and so forth, that the difference in price is mostly the well drilling. Really, it, it really ends up boiling down to the wells because mm -hmm. the equipment inside is very similar when you get into this higher efficiency equipment. Right. Yeah, smart. One thing that I think is interesting on this job, because you're coastal here, uh, we're in kind of a basement area that could be a future flood zone that you're being flood hardy. You don't have outdoor equipment to worry about flooding on this house, right? No outdoor equipment at all with this system. We've got uh, a couple pieces of equipment going in two mechanical rooms here. Two and mechanical spaces in an attic in an for attic. the third unit. Right. But yeah, all the equipment is now housed inside the house. There is no external equipment. That's pretty cool. If flood happens, there's nothing f to get damaged or to go away. It's all underground. Right, That's and it's cool. also not being so close to the water, we have nothing outside that can deteriorate from the salt. Yeah, that makes sense. What's the second myth, would you say, in your uh, experience on these systems, Wade? Uh, I think Lou would agree with me. Reliability? Definitely reliability, yes. So, so talk to us about that, Lou. Is that, are these systems as reliable as conventional equipment? Yes, if not more reliable nowadays. Um, the technology today with the heat transfer of the wells, uh, we now use closed wells instead of open wells. Years ah, ago... So talk was a, to me about that. What does that mean, open well versus closed well? So open wells is more of like a potable well that you'd have for your regular drinking water, where we just pump the water out of the ground into the house, we go through our coaxial heat exchangers, we send the water back to the ground. The biggest problem with that is you get a lot of sediment, dirt, some type of debris. That ends up following out the pumps and the heat exchangers in the system over time. So nowadays with the closed wells, we're 
we're not utilizing, we're not touching the ground water, so to speak, that we're not bringing that water into the house. All right, so in other words, this loop here, that's the return, this is one continuous home run from here through the loop and then on the supply side, all in one pipe, right? It's all in one pipe, there are mechanical joints. Okay. Um, but the piping that goes down in the well casing is a continuous loop. All right, and then you've got some, some mixture of water and glycol in that loop that's going to transfer that heat from the ground to your heat exchanger in the house. Yes, we actually use a inhibited propylene glycol and we'll run that down to about a 15 degree mix. Uh, that way we get a little freeze protection just Meaning in case. Meaning it won't freeze until it gets to 15 degrees. Correct, that becomes our freeze point is 15 now instead of 32 for straight water. And it also gives us some inhibitors uh, to help keep the pipes clean and make sure everything stays where it's supposed to. Got it, very interesting. All right, number three, what do you think is the third thing, Lou, on, uh, on these that's kind of the myth of these systems? Well, I would, say, I would say the third thing would be like longevity and, you know, kind of working in with reliability that the big thing was that the water was always an issue. We would have to install special filters. Uh, one type that we use is called a Sandmaster. It's a helical filter. It allows the water to come in and be whipped into a cent like a centrifuge okay. almost. And that would separate the dirt and the sediment and cause it to go down a drain line. Some places with open wells, you wouldn't have the filters or the filters wouldn't be working and then everything would get fouled. Now with the closed loop and the glycol, much more reliable, much more uh, effective. We get better heat transfer now than we did before, meaning more efficient. Our coaxes don't, we, we don't have fouling on our coaxials. We're now using with the technology today, we're using variable speed pumps that are monitoring uh, the pressure in the system at all times. We have three-way control valves that are modulating inside the units uh, to help maintain the performance. And a properly installed geothermal heat pump, you could get 25 years out of it. Wow. Or more. Or more. And then and is that also 25 years out of these pipes, or could those actually go longer than that? Oh, they could definitely go longer. We're I talking mean, about is, just the pump system and everything that's on the I mean, a side. pump is a mechanical device. At some point, the pump is going to fail, but right. if, there's no, you know, if there haven't been any issues and no dirt and no reasons for the pump to foul, it could easily run 25 years. That's great. So you could, in theory, get several decades out of this pipe system. Yes, yes, you could. That's pretty awesome. Guys, I really appreciate your time. I'll put a link to Lou's uh, company here in Rhode Island in the description. And if you're not currently following this guy, go follow Wade on Instagram. He's doing some incredible coastal projects. Stay tuned for some future videos with Wade and I. And go check out his work on Build Show Network. I'll have a link to the description uh, below where you can sign up for our newsletter and see what's new on Wade's videos every week. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, I'll see you next time on The Build Show.